So we're doing this Ultimate Go Tour, and uh, you can find this at tour.artandlabs.com forward slash tour list. And I have an entire playlist where we're going through all the steps in this, so the link to that's down below. If you're catching this video in the middle, click that link to the playlist, start at the beginning, and work through it. And this will help you deepen your understanding with Go and lay foundations for you in the Go programming language if you're just getting started with that. Uh, and if you want to advance further with the Go programming language, I'm going to give you resources at the end of this video, including a coupon code to a course. So hang out for that or jump to the end if you want to go straight to that. And the links will all be down in the description down below. So we're doing this uh, tour, and when you get to this page, you can click Welcome to get started. And we've already been through that one there, and we talked about UTF-8 ASCII Unicode. Uh, so let me just say that in a more logical order. We talked about ASCII Unicode, UTF-8, and runes and how we could see you know, how many uh, a string is made up of runes, and each rune can, is encoded as UTF-8 Unicode, and so it could be of one to four bytes, and we saw how we could loop over a string and get each rune, and then we saw how we could loop over, uh, take each rune and convert it to a slice of bytes, and then loop over that slice of bytes and see how many bytes we're making up each rune. So that's the first video in this playlist. If that was all foreign to you, you can watch that video. <laughs> it's definitely gonna increase your skills. Uh, and the next thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go past this one. This just shows you how to run this thing locally on your machine if you don't wanna run it on the web. And uh, the next one we're gonna look at is this one, which deals with the time package. So we're gonna explore the time package and I have a really cool readme file set up here to go through with you where we're gonna learn about mon monotonic time, time units in UTSC. Uh, UTC and see the uh, UTC time zones around the world. Uh, something important that you should know is that if you're working on the Ultimate Go Tour, this is running on an instance which needs to spin up if nobody's been using it for a minute. And so if you click run and nothing happens, uh, you just come up here and hit refresh. And then when you click run again, that instance will have spun up and uh, it will now run. So there's the answer to that. So let's explore time and the time package in the Go library. So if you go Go Lang package time, it's gonna bring you to the time package. And in the time package, we're gonna go through how to use this and look at the index and the different types that are in there and the different methods. And importantly, look at the constants here. But, uh, and I'll show you what's important with that. But first I just wanna point out that uh, if you wanna to get to the code that's being used in the course, uh, come to GitHub and goes, go to goes to 11. And so that's my GitHub username. And I chose that because um, of a movie, a Rob Reiner movie called Spinal Tap. And that's a pretty funny movie if you've never seen it, but there's a scene in there. You could just YouTube that scene, Spinal Tap goes to 11. But that made me laugh. And so I chose that name. And here, many years later, it's still with me. Uh, so click on that, go into repositories, come to my user account, go to learn to code, go version three. And then when you come into this repo here, you'll want to go to the 00brbk go tour 02 time package. And then in this package, you'll be able to read about monotonic time, which is important to know about when working with time. So you can pause the video and read about that. And so basically there's like, you know, wall clock time, which could be moved forward or backwards depending upon, uh, you know, whether or not it's daylight savings time or whatever. But monotonic time is going to never, it's always going to progress forward. So when you measure durations, differences in time, how long did something take, monotonic time is the way you do that. And so uh, Go has both built into it and it uses monotonic time. So you have consistent measurements of duration as you're, you know, measuring duration. And so it only ever advances forward. So you want to pause the video and read about monotonic time. And then here's an example. We're going to look at you know how to use this stuff, like getting a start time and then sleeping for a moment, and then getting an end time and seeing the end and subtracting from it the start, right? So seeing the end and subtracting the start to get the duration, how long has elapsed, and then seeing how much time was elapsed. So that's an example of using um, the time package to calculate you know duration between a start time and an end time. I'm going to copy that code and we'll use that code as we get started. And then here's a little bit more about monotonic time and time units. And so these are questions that I asked. I was recently hired to help a company, a Fortune 500, hire Go programmers who also had expertise in PHP, which I do not have. So I evaluated their expertise in Go. And like, you know, asking people, what is monotonic time? Or, you know, tell me about the different time units all the way up to or down to picoseconds from a second to picoseconds. Like asking people questions like that really kind of reveals how much have they explored the internals 
of the Go programming language, and then also how much have they thought about performance and measuring performance, because when you get into performance and measuring performance, uh, you really start to know time units. <laughs> so I just put these time units in here to help you out. And uh, there's a second, a deci second. Deci is like the prefix for 10. Centi is the prefix for 100. So that's one tenth of a second, one one hundredth of a second. Milli is the prefix for 1,000. So this is one one thousandth of a second. And then you have MNP, right? Micro, nano, and pico. And you can remember that it's just like basically deci's 10, centi's 100, milli's 1,000. And then after that, you got MNP. And that's alphabetically, right? It's M. L-M-N-O-P, right? It goes in alphabetical order, so micro, nano, pico. So it's a little mnemonic device to help you remember second, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, pico. And uh, when you get to micro, nano, and pico, they start going up by powers of three. So here we're increasing by power of one, negative one. But then when we jump to here, we're increasing from negative three power to the power of negative three, right? to the power of negative six, we're jumping and increasing by thousandth. And, uh, and this is something I wanted to point out in the time package, which is super cool. Here we have these constants, and, uh, and these constants start out with, they don't do pico, I guess they figured that's too small, but it starts out with a nano, and it sets it as a duration of type one. And so duration, I'm in the basement, Families above me, there's a little noise. It's all okay. <laughs> a duration, if we come up here and look at the index, a duration is one of the types you really need to know about in Go. And all it is is exactly what it sounds like, right? So type duration is the duration between two points in time. So beginning time and ending time, what was the duration of that? That's a duration, how long did it take? And so if we look at that constant here, so we come back to the constant, right? A nanosecond is a duration of one, right? So it just lasts that long, a duration of one, and, uh, and then a microsecond is a thousand nanoseconds, and a milli is a thousand micros, and a second's a thousand millis, and a minute's 60 times seconds, and an hour 60 times minutes. So I just think this is really elegant and clean and readable and logical. And I love that about the Go language, like just, you know, the sort of Zen like poetic way that they've beautifully encapsulated and captured some essential piece of knowledge like this right here. And so knowing about these constants and these time measurements is important. And it's also important to realize that these are singular, micro, second, millisecond, second, minute, hour, because you will see these constants in, in Go code when working with time. And then also up here, remember those constants were, were singular. Up here we have many of those words as plurals, and those are methods attached to values of type uh, duration. So microseconds, milliseconds, minute, uh, minutes, seconds, right, nanoseconds, right, those are, those are methods attached to any value of type duration. And uh, you can tell they're methods because here they have the receiver, right, of type duration in front of the function, and that makes the function a method attached to a value of type duration. And if that all makes sense to you, I'm gonna give you a link at the end of this video to check out uh, two different courses which could help you understand all of this. And so uh, when you use these uh, methods here, so here's a millisecond, and it gives you an example here in the, in the package. So here we're doing parse duration one second, and uh, parse duration, we can look up what that gives us, but then we get this value here, u, and we're saying u and, and turn it into milliseconds, right? And if we look at what milliseconds does, it returns an int 64. So milliseconds returns the duration as an integer millisecond count. So it gives you the milliseconds, right, when you have a time. And so that's uh, super important, knowing about time units. And then also it's really important to understand UTC when you're working in the time package. So GMT is the old way to measure time, and it's not as accurate as UTC. And UTC stands for Universal Time Coordinated or Coordinated Universal Time. And, um, and that's the, the way that it's measured now in computing. So you can pause the video and read about this. And you could also take a look at converting UTC to UTC-5, Eastern Standard Time, which is right here. So we're from the time package. We're saying, hey, we're going to create a date here. And if we look at what that date does, so if we come up here and scroll up to our index and look for time date. So right here, click on that. I'll just do that a little bit fast. So let me just uh, go back here and show you that once more. But so type duration is really important to know about in the time package. And then type time is really important to know about in the in the um, in the time package. And so you could say, you know, I, I want to do from time package time now. And uh, and we're going to see that here. Well, in that first code that we did, and I guess I'll just create a new folder here and do this as zero nine. 
and this new folder as main.go. And then in here, I'll paste in that code. But here you could say we do package from package time, uh, we are calling the now function. And now is returning from package time a value of type time, right? So from package time, we're calling the now function. And that now function is right there. There's the now function. It returns a value of time, type time, right? And so, you know, it's returning a value of type time from package time. And so when we have a value of type time, uh, we have all these methods available to it down here. And so these are all the methods. They have the receiver of type time in front of them. And, uh, and the reason we're looking at this is because we are looking at the converting UTC to UTC 5 Eastern Standard Time. So you can see here we're getting a time.date. And when we get that UTC time, we could then convert that over to a fixed time zone Eastern Standard Time and shift it back 5 and uh, UTC time in Eastern Standard Time. So it's just an example of converting to Eastern Standard Time. You can play with that code. You can copy it right here in the repo. But also really important, what I want you to see is this map. It's a beautiful map. I love this map. I'm going to right-click this map and open this image in a new tab. And then um, here it shows you all the different UTC time codes. This just clarifies for me <laughs> like uh, what UTC time is. And so UT UTC 0 is right here. It's United Kingdom all of that stuff right there, right? Just kind of interesting to see how this gets divided up. But then uh, UTC minus five is Eastern Standard Time and that's over here in this area. So let's look at some of the examples in the code here. We'll start with this one. So from package time, I'm saying, hey, give me the time now, that's my start time. And then from package time, I'm calling the sleep function. And I'm saying, hey, I wanna sleep for uh, one second from package time second, right? And that's gonna be my constant right there. Uh, and you can see up here constant time second, right, which is uh, equal to a thousand milliseconds times milliseconds, thousand times milliseconds is going to be one second. And I want two seconds, so I'm going to sleep for two seconds. So it's just going to pause the processing going through the main function here. And I'm going to call time.now again and get the end time. And then I'm going to say, hey, end when I have a value of type time. So come back over here to the standard library at package time and look at the index when I have a value of type time. I have all those methods associated with it. And then here is a sub, right? And then it gives me back a duration. And so if I, you know, call sub and pass in like some future time, like or previous time, start time right here. So at the end, call it from end because time.now gave me a value of type time. And, uh, and then with the value of type time, you know, I have this method sub. So I'm going to subtract from the end time, the start time, right? And that's going to give me the elapsed time. And so then I'm going to print out what was the elapsed time and I'll put out that elapsed time right there. And if I look at what sub gives me, it gives me a type duration. It returns the type duration. So just kind of notice that, right? When I call time.now, it gives me a value of type time. So end is a value of type time. With a value of type time, I could call all of these methods right here, right? So with a value of type time, I call these methods, including sub right there. And then when I call sub, it gives me, so I call sub here and I say from the end time, subtract the start time. And, uh, and when I call sub, it's gonna give me a duration. Like what's the duration between those two? And uh, the duration will return and then it's gonna print out that duration right there. And with a duration, if I wanted to, I have those other methods available to me. And so when I press my period after elapse, because that's going to be a value of type time duration, it gives me all those, those methods there. So if I wanted to just really quickly see it in seconds or microseconds or whatever else right there, I could do that right there. Uh, and so when I run this code, we're in 09. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to CD up a level and go into 09. And, uh, and then clear this and go run main.go. We'll take a look at that. And uh, we'll see here that we got 2.00 whatever seconds, right, is what came out there. And so if I wanted to see that as milliseconds, I could do this, milliseconds, and put in milliseconds. And just to remind ourselves, and then I'll run this and we'll take a look at that. And, uh, and, uh, and here, elapse time is percent, bang, uh, 64 equals 2002. Uh, so let me just take a look at that and see what my linter says. Milliseconds returns the duration as an integer millisecond count. And, uh, and so if I come over here and do a V instead of a string, right, it'll print the value. And so the value is, uh, elapsed time is 2010. And, uh, and so 2010 milliseconds, so 2010 is kind of what we did there. And this decimal went one, two, three over, right? So that's kind of what it came through as. And if I wanted to, I could put here 
that this measurement is in milliseconds. So I'm going to run that one more time. And elapsed time is 2010 milliseconds, 2001 milliseconds this time. So that's a little bit of information about the time package. And it's a little bit of added value to the second step here in the Go Playground. In the next videos, we're going to continue working through the Ultimate Go Tour, and I'll provide you with my reflections and commentary on this incredible resource that Bill Kennedy has helped put together. Oh, I want to give you resources. So um, if you want to take my course, I teach beginner to intermediate, learn to code, uh, the Go programming language. And if you come into this repo, it goes to 11, learn to code, Go version 3, come down to the end. There's a link here to my course. This brings you to all my courses on Udemy, just a redirect. And uh, here on Udemy is my Go course. It's great, you should check it out. Uh, if you need any help, if you need a coupon, or even if you need free access, you could just leave a comment down below this video. And uh, I got into education because I love helping people. And I am, where my, I am where I am in my life because people helped me. So I totally believe in everybody helping everybody and together we all succeed. So if you need help getting into the course, just send me a message and I'll get you a coupon or even give you free access if that's what you need. You could also, you could also reach out to me on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, so that's, uh, that's that course. And I also have a great one on web programming with Go right here and also in Korean, but this is the newer version. It's going to be better, I've got to update it. And then the, the next resource I wanna give you is here at Arden Labs. Uh, Bill Kennedy has a great course, teaches intermediate to advanced. And of course we have some overlap in the intermediate area, but if you really wanna take your skills up to the advanced level, you could click on training and then go into uh, here, self-paced training for individuals. And in here, you could click on the go bundle right here and enroll now. And then if you put in a discount, you could uh, put in this coupon code. So Bill and I talked uh, this morning. And if you put in this discount code and apply it, you're going to get some discount. That discount's going to vary uh, depending upon, you know, like who are the first people to come and use it <laughs> and uh, all kinds of factors. So you could come in here and see what kind of discount you get when you push apply. Um, so that's it. Those are the resources. One other resource which is really valuable is uh, these interview questions right here. That's super valuable too. So if you're learning Go, that's also fun to go through. All right, a lot of good information. Thanks for joining me. Sorry for the noise above, but that's life. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.